Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how to turn an image into a part using FreeCAD. So let's get started. So it's been a while since I had a free CAD tutorial, so I am glad to be back doing another one. Now, today's objective is very simple. We're just basically taking a part that I have. This is a little paper craft design made to hold up the Millennium Falcon, and it's like a stand, but you could see it's kind of like warped. It's, it's hard to tell, but it's like warped. So it actually doesn't hold the Millennium Falcon still anymore. And I want to convert it into something like this where it's plastic and it's stiff. This way I don't have to rely on this paper anymore. Now to do that, we just need to basically take a picture of this and put some sort of coin or ruler next to it to identify the measurements. And then we could draw this out in our FreeCAD program. So that's the objective for today. Now, if you guys are interested in mass production or trying to take these designs and converting it from plastic to metal, look no further than PCBWay. They actually have an online calculator that could actually give you all the suggested prices for what you're trying to do. And best of all, they have different types of materials that you can print from. So if you don't want something that's 3D, you could do a SLA print or you could do a metal print. Or if you have any DIY hobbies that involves PCBs, they can do that as well. So if you guys are interested in mass producing what you are designing, uh, look no further than PCBWay. Now back to the video. So here we have FreeCAD 0.21.1 and that's very specific because before 2.1 they still had something called the image tab that's here and they don't they no longer have they just incorporated this into everything which makes it a lot easier to deal with. So first thing what we're going to do is jump into creating a brand new thing. All right, and I am going to switch this to part design because that's what I'm going to be using anyway. So I'll create a body and create a sketch and kind of just go into selecting my normal procedures as I would. I'm going to close this out because I don't really need it yet, but I'm going to leave that because I'm going to draw on it later. Actually, we didn't have to do that step yet, but we, we did it ahead of time. So the first thing that what I want to do is go into file and import a picture. And from here, I have a picture that I took of this already. And you can see I actually have two measure, two forms of measurements on there. One is a quarter and the other one is a ruler. And this is why we actually put these things in place of the part that we're trying to copy. The first thing we need to do is actually get the measurements of this. Obviously the picture itself is off measurements and you wanna get this to be perfect. Knowing that I have the measurements on board, that works right. You just really need one form of measurement. And in my case, if I didn't have the coin or the ruler, I know that the measurement from the top over here to the bottom over here is 20 millimeters. So it kind of, I could have just guessed from that as well. Now we're going to double click on our image and you're going to have this new slider on the left. All right, here you can actually do a lot of things. You could set the Y distance and you can move it up or down, left or right. Uh, you can move this anywhere you want and this will start shifting. You could do rotations if you wanted to, you start seeing rotation. And you could just manually do stuff if you want to on this. I'm just going to leave everything back to zero millimeters. Oops, kicked out of that. All right, so what I did was just hit number pad two to give me this little look that I'm looking at top view. And then I'm gonna do calibrate. And in here, we basically have the centimeters already. So we could just basically take one point, move this to the next point, like right over here. And then we calibrate that to be one centimeter or 10 millimeters. Once you do that, everything is scaled appropriately. So you see the width and the height is completely different. And we can actually take the ruler and measure the top of this to the bottom of this should be about 20 millimeters. Obviously I'm off by a hair, but you can see that it's by 20 millimeters. And that's how I know it's appropriate to what we got. And if I move over here and do the measurements again, and let's grab the ruler, and I take this point right here to this point right here, it's about 10 millimeters, you see? Well, I'm off by a little again, but you get the idea. This kind of scales the image to your appropriate size. And that's how can we always put a coin or a ruler next to it. But with that being said, and everything's done, we can now start sketching everything. Now, the second tool that I'm gonna show you, which is an extremely powerful tool. I'm gonna head into sketch, which is the thing that we were working before. And there's this one little tool right over here called create polylines. Now from here, I just basically have to start drawing out the outside. But what's cool about this polyline thing is that by the time I get to like say a curve, you see that there's a curve up on top? You just hit the M key on the keyboard 
and it'll actually change the function of this. Now I get a line, I get a line this way, and then now I could actually get a curve. So I could click there, press M again, back to my original tool. So you're basically hitting M to cycle through the tools in this one poly tool. And I'm just selecting the points that I want. There you go. It doesn't have to be perfect right now because I could always adjust it later. But what you want to do is at least draw the first graph out. Again, here, here, and I know the point's going to start changing right around here. So I'm going to hit M twice, three times, get that curve in, throw that in here, and then start basically designing um, the part that I need. And obviously I'm just speed running through this because I should actually do the points a little bit better. And there, capture that, capture that. It's getting sloppy, but you get the idea. I'm just going through it real quick. Like this, like this, and, and then do the turn. Oh, that one's ugly. I'm gonna do this, this, this. Do that turn, come back up here. Oops, I forgot to switch my tool. I could fix that later on. Again, I, I will make these mistakes later on, but it's something that you can always fix. And there we get that line back here, here, here. I'm not even gonna do a turn on that one. Here, 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 here. I'm gonna reverse that turn right there. And then last but not least, what you wanna do is close this off by clicking on that. And then now that shape is done. Now from here on, what you can do is just start modifying some of the stuff that you want to clean this up a little bit. So I'm gonna move this over here, move that over here, and slowly kind of fill in the spots that you need and slowly fix everything that you want. So I'm just fixing some stuff here and there. You can go to exact measurements on certain parts that you need. But again, I'm not gonna go drag you along this journey. But say I'm done with this, I could hit close. And now I could actually turn it into a solid. And I know that this is only two millimeters thick, so I could just do two millimeters thick, hit okay. And from now on, I can move this around and you could see I finally got the part that I need. Now, how do I do the holes that are in underneath this? Whoops. What I would do is now take this part, the one that I did, right click and go into appearance and kind of put a little bit of a transparency into it. This way I could see underneath and I could draw all these other boxes that I want. Hit close, make a new sketch, and then I could go in there and start drawing these holes that I want. So here's one. Again, it's not perfect, but you get the idea. Here's another one, and here's another one. And then I would use the polylines again just to do these diagonal ones, like this. And then like this. Again, it's not perfect, but you get the idea. Hit close, and then now I could actually do a pocket with these. And you could see it actually pu puts a pocket through. Hit OK. And there, I have my little part that I want. Now at this point, once you have everything all set up, what you can do is select the part that you need and then file, and then head over to export, export it into a STL or whatever you want. In my case, it's gonna be an STL because if I wanted to throw it into my 3D printer, right over here, STL, save, and that's it. Now I have my 3D model. Now I don't have Cura on my machine, but you get the idea now I could import this into my Cura and start 3D printing this and you should end up with a part something like this. And this is all plastic compared to what it was on paper. And that is it. That's how I would take an image and turn it into a part. I use this a lot, especially, I do a lot of these free CAD stuff for the purpose of 3D printing. Uh, not engineering much, like I don't design engines or gears or anything, but I use this a lot just to, for my own basic needs, like printing out parts for stuff I need. So I hope this helped. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. Again, I'm still new to FreeCAD. I only use it to an extent of what I just told you. There are things that I might've missed or not the best approach to certain things, but it still gets me around. 
Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.